All right, guys, second example here for three phase. So for this one, we've got a Y source and a Y load. Again, just so you don't get screwed up here, we're not sure what the primary is here. This is the secondary of our transformer. And it looks like we've been given a voltage of 600 volts. And we've been giving a resistance on the phase of 17.35 ohms. So this voltage right here, let's do our voltages first. Come on. This voltage right here is uh, from this outside terminal to this outside terminal. So that voltage that's been given is our line voltage. If we keep taking that voltage out, then we can see that our voltage on the outside of the circuit is 600 volts, and that's our line voltage. Okay, so we can say that this guy is 600 volts on the line, and that secondary of the transformer is feeding this Y load, right? That same voltage is going to be from here to here. Okay, now our phase voltage on the Y, we know is root 3 less than our line voltage. So if we want to just do our, uh, our rules here for the Y circuit, we know that for the Y circuit, our I line is equal to I phase, but our V line is equal to our V phase times the square root of three. Okay, so we have identical occurrence, but our voltage on the phase is gonna be less by root three. So our phase voltage, which is the voltage on the inside, right? So that voltage right here, we're gonna find by taking 600 volts on the line, and we're gonna divide that by root three. Now it should be 347, right? Because we've already memorized those equations. Let's just bring this across. Come on, buddy. There we go. So we've got 600 volts divided by the square root of 3 or 1.732 and that gives us 346.4. Okay, I'm going to go with standard voltages, so I'm going to round that up to 347 volts. Okay, and that's my phase voltage. So I'm going to throw that guy right here, 347 volts, and that is my phase value. Now, this secondary is a Y, and this load is a Y. There's only one secondary and one load, so these guys are a mirror image of each other. So we know that the voltage here is also going to be 347. Next step is we're going to find uh, our phase current. So next thing we need to do is take a, a three phase circuit and break it down into a single phase equation. So here we've got 347 volts. We're putting that across 17.35 ohms. Right, we got that from this guy right here. And 347 divided by 17.35 gives us 20 amps. 20 amps on the phase. Beautiful. That's the current that's flowing right there. Okay, so that's our phase current of 20 amps, and we found that, again, by taking our 347 volts, dividing it by 17.35 ohms, and that gave us a phase current of 20 amps. We can see that there's only one path for that current to flow. So whatever is flowing on the inside of the Y is also going to be flowing on the outside of the Y. So we know that I line is equal to I phase, and so our line current is also going to be equal to 20 amps, right? And that was the same as our phase current. So I line is equal to I phase, so that's equal to 20 amps. Beautiful. Remember that the source is also a Y, so that 20 amps is coming from here, and we can see that there's only one path for that current to flow here, so the current on the inside is going to be easy enough. It's going to be 20 amps on the phase. They're going to be identical. So 20 amps on the line, 20 amps on the phase. Okay, last thing we're going to do is we're going to find uh, our power values. 
So remember that there are two equations that we can make use of. So we can use our line voltage value. So line voltage times line current. Line current is 20 amps on the line. And we're going to multiply our three phase values by root 3. Okay, so what have we got? We've got uh, 600 volts times 20 amps times the square root of 3. That gives me 20,784.6. Okay, I'm just going to put watts here because these are resistive loads. I'll put V over here because that's my secondary, but they're essentially the same. Okay, if we look at the single phase values, 600 volts on the phase, and my phase current, no, that's not my phase voltage. My phase voltage is 347 volts. 347 volts on the phase times 20 amps on the phase, and we're multiplying that by 3. Okay, so again, we've got 347 volts on the phase, we have 20 amps on the phase, and we're multiplying those guys by 3, 20,820. That's close. It's off by a touch though, right? Now remember that uh, I rounded this up, right? I rounded this up from 346.4 up to 347. So that's why these values are not exactly the same because I rounded to the three, the standard of 347 volts on the phase. If I kept it exactly as the value of 600 divided by root 3, then these would be identical as well. Don't worry about this small difference in values between the VA and the wattage. Essentially, it's the given us of the exact same value. Okay, so again, we took the the source voltage of 600 volts that was our line voltage that came across 347 volts on the phase divided by 17.35 gives us 20 amps on the phase phase and line current are identical so 20 amps comes all the way through and then we found our total wattage by taking line voltage times line current times root 3 or phase voltage times phase current times 3 and we found that these guys were identical all right, guys, hopefully it's slowly kicking in. Uh, you got to do a lot of these and you got to keep repeating those. So uh, I'll just put, keep putting video after video so you can keep repeating and get the delta and y circuits into your head.